Hello, everybody, and welcome along to the Blue Monday podcast now in our fifth year, something, something, something. It's pandemic time. I haven't done the intro properly for weeks and weeks, but today has been D-Day, a momentous day. We said we were going to do a pod today. Um, We kind of knew what was going to happen, but um, today has been the day that the EFL have voted to curtail in a stunning landslide victory for um, lovers of Rotherham everywhere um, for it to curtail the season. Um, I've got Richard with me. I've got Joe with me. Um, first of all, guys, let's just get without... I'll go into detail on the timeline going back to March. Let's just get your instant reactions. I'm going to go to Richard first because, as I saw in a great Classic Albums episode about Stevie Wonder, that they wound him up. They they tried they kept stopping him singing to get the anger up by his barn in hard time. So I'm gonna keep Joe waiting because I know <laughs> I know he's really grumpy about this and it's gonna <laughs> amuse me. So Richard, what is your immediate reaction to the curtailment of the season and Ipswich finishing in eleventh position? Oh I I don't fuss, Ben. I'm quite happy with the outcome, aren't we all? Isn't it? You know. Um so yeah, as you said, uh, to be expected, totally unsurprised that um, McAntony and Marcus Evans, the kind of Ann and deck of EFL League One owners, haven't managed to convince everyone to uh, Laurel and come on, let's keep going. Um, but if it just Cooper flags and <laughs> Jennifer Taylor Clark, it just um, it just highlights the kind of tin pottery of League One, which we talked about before. But when you've got a professional league and 18 out of 23 can't be asked really, and, and we know that some have already got stakes in the game about promotion and so on you can't blame Coventry and Rotherham and so on but the fact it was 18 to 5 or whatever Darren McAntony said it was well he said it was um, 18 to 4 which doesn't add yeah. up yeah well, I'm thinking maybe some maybe Donny abstained or someone maybe there's some controversy there hmm. but not surprised and now it's kind of done and dusted we can stop talking about it and concentrate on what an absolute balls up we made of the season and what happens next and that feels like a really good opportunity for Joe to um to vent <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Joe Fares. Um, Joe, your your immediate reaction will go into the minutiae, into the weeds. We'll go granular, as the great Harry from Bath would say. But just your your immediate reaction when um, when that broke earlier on. It's difficult because I think as soon it was sort of ninety nine percent certain it was going to happen. So it's not like a bolt from the blue that came up. But I think the biggest sort of overriding frustration with the whole process is sort of what Rich hinted at there is that the EFL has got three competitions that it's responsible for. One of them is continuing in the championship and the other two are not playing football. And it seems too many teams are happy to not even try and play football that the can was kicked so far down the road that even if that there was no way, even if the decision was made today, teams weren't back in training yet. They needed to wait three weeks to train. We were going to be two weeks behind the championship as it is. And it's like it was a fait accompli. Have you have you heard the to... dates? Have you heard the dates of the League Two playoffs? They're like next week. <laughs> next <20 laughs> <or something>. next <laughs> Thursday. So so they've been, but they've been training. But also, I th- it sort of came out yesterday that that Portsmouth, Wickham, Fleetwood have been training as well. And yeah. they were tested COVID for the first time on yeah. So, yeah. Um, Monday, weren't they? I can see why sort of the likes of Darren McAnthony and Mark Palios and Nicola Palios have sort of furious at this because they're trying to get something happening and it's like the 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 lack of anyone taking the lead has just allowed it just drift to nothingness i do have to agree with dara the explorer he tweeted earlier that as soon as um and i don't like this getting personalized to rick parry because rick parry doesn't i know he's the head of the afl but it seems to get all kind of put on on his door um i'm sure he's very well paid for it but um, they said as soon as you're going to let the clubs decide, this was always going to happen, that, that self-interest was going to win over. And we discussed before, chaps, um, there weren't enough, with the options on the table, there were not enough motivated parties to vote to continue playing. Um, look, let, Rich, let's go through this timeline. Um, so I'm going to do this off the top of my head. Um, uh, being the professional outfit we are, we are completely unscripted today as ever in this ragtag podcast. Um, so everything got cancelled. Uh, March, the... What was our last game? It was against Oxford, wasn't it? Cov, wasn't it? Cov at Cov, home 1-0? Yeah, Cov the following weekend. It was one of many home 1-0 defeats. We didn't, yeah, it was Bristol Rovers was the game that we were going to play and then... 
and do a live podcast there. yeah well, we're going to do some stuff yeah and then the covid yeah joy um so we got the cancellation we got told three weeks um the situation got worse around the world fair enough um football cancelled then till may the 16th or some arbitrary date that was just uh, joe used the term the can kick down the road so there's an example of it there um for the first few weeks of this it felt like the efl was actually ahead of the um the premier league there was lots of lots of kind of arguing and posturing from the premier league and um the efl seemed to be you know trying to get everything together then as joe has pointed out um the premier league only being 20 clubs and um, with a four billion pound television deal behind it, managed to kind of get things uh, moving in the right direction. We know the figure now: cancellation would have cost 762 million pounds in a in a TV rebate. So if you're wondering why the Premier League has started, um, there you go. Um, so then all of a sudden the Premier League gets their act together, and then we get this farcical situation in the Championship where um, it kind of starts off with um, Andy Holt and Accrington and, you know, the spokesman for clubs of those size saying, oh, we, we can't we can't afford to play on without um, without fans. We can't afford to do testing and I'm furloughing my staff. And then it seemed like the yin to his yang was um, Dara McCantony of Peterborough saying, well, no, we're in the opposite situation. It's actually going to cost us more money to stop than it is to continue because of the um, defaulting on sponsorships and refunding season tickets and things of that nature. Um, So then you get your impasse. Um, In the meantime, the Premier League announces its dates. And then the only time where I think the EFL really dropped the ball, Rich, was um, we want to listen to your proposals. Then we reject all of them. Then we give you another 10 days to make more proposals, which we've ultimately... Another week then went on top of that as well. Yeah, the uh, plus the extra day because it was it was and then, yeah, supposed to be Monday, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Um, so ultimately, um, and I can see in the wording of the EFL statement um, that we've listened. Um, you know, I, I can't remember what their wording was. We, we've listened extensively, say to. So they obviously just seem to be trying to cover themselves from lawsuits. We listen to your proposals; they're all rubbish. We're gonna do we're gonna do ours basically, Shit. and that's where. That's where we're at today, um, Richard. Uh, a Tranmere proposal, um, apparently an Ipswich amendment to the relegations, the regulations. Excuse me, not not a proposal. Um, can I play devil's advocate? You come in first, Rich. Um, I know what Joe is saying um, that the three divisions are doing um, different things. What what else could the EFL have done here? Given what at one end there's an open door to 100 million quid a year income from broadcast. Um, in the middle, there's this disparate, which Joe's pointed out very well, Sunderland playing AFC Wimbledon, which feels like a top-end championship v's League 2 in the same division. And then at League 2, seem to all be in the same boat and wanted to cancel. Well, <laughs> were the EFL not between a rock and a hard place here, Rich? I, I think putting the decision on the owners and the clubs makes sense if you're the EFL right so there's a little bit of we've set the parameters of your decision we've had a vote today we've ratified certain options admitted that as Joe said it's kind of fate to complete at that point you know there's you, you've got two binary options and League One was only ever going to go for one of them but but at least if you allow the dialogue to happen then you can at least say well you know you guys had the opportunity to uh, to come up with a good solution we listened to it I liked all your ideas but I'm not going to go any for any of them and um and therefore, the decision is kind of with the EFL can just let that play out now. And um, and what we've talked about before is it it just flags the total disparity within the leagues. And we talked, you talked about um, parachute money a lot with um, with Kieran Maguire and and how that and that kind of trickles down to a point, doesn't it? And then it stops. And everyone else is is in the shit. Let's be honest. Um, and I can totally understand why League Two that was a really easy decision. And League One, we're just we happen to be in League One at the worst possible time in the history of football. Same with them in Championship with ITV Digital. We just find ourselves in the crap end of, of, of decisions. And and I think, as, as we, to your question, EFL is always going to give it to the owners to, to figure out. And then you, you let that happen for a while. And then, yeah, binary decision. Nice and easy. Joe, I, I just think that there's... 
that there should be a responsibility on the EFL to help their clubs through the competition because basically the reason why we've got a Premier League is because the the top division, the big clubs in the league, broke away from the smaller clubs. They wanted a bigger share of the pie. Ironically, Rick um, Rick Parry involved with that, was, right? Yeah, and he was well. He was head of the Premier League then, and yeah. now we're at a position where the EFL has three leagues. The one of which has the most money is now effectively on the same schedule as the Premier League, and the other two are on a separate league. And this is just well, to me, there, this there's is... a future echo for you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, this is. I think this is a momentous day for football with regards to the EFL in that, right, that down, this Rich. is this is the EFL splitting, isn't it? But between Nine, between the Championship and League One and League Two, there is a there's a yeah. big split, and this is yep. this is on our way to Premier League to regionalise yep. lower leagues. How how that plays out, I don't know, but there's there's no way we're not going down that road now. And I think this is probably been a sort of dam that's burst. I think it's past a point of no return with regards to that now because the Championship and League One and League Two should all be aligned and the EFL should have been doing all they can to make that happen, whether that's borrowing money, whether that's going to the Premier League cap in hand. The thing, you could have given every club in League One and League Two half a million pounds and that would have probably seen them through the season with regards to the testing costs, the training costs, the furlough costs. And what's that, £24 million when you've got teams being relegated, getting £40 million to each club as a parachute payment. I know these are big figures in some in some people's heads, but the, the, the testing cost and some form of compensation could easily have been given by the Premier League, the PFA, the EFL, but the EFL has elected to split its competition. Yeah. I, I mean, is, is the national interest something involved in here as well? Because you've already covered, Ben, the kind of legal and financial ramifications for the Premier League kind of packing up. But Ain't going to happen. <laughs> so, but also from a, from a national like morale perspective, more people care about the Premier League and to a lesser extent the Championship than League One. Only because of its happening. proximity to the Premier League, Rich, though. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's no, what no I mean. one's, and, and, and no one's going to be watching reg- the Championship, though, are they? But it's, it's the Premier League relegation and, and, and promotion, all that stuff that needs to happen. But but no one apart from us really cares about League One and League Two, let's be honest. But no, so, one, no one in a championship, no one outside a championship supporter cares about the championship because there's going to be 40 live Premier League games on a week on TV, 20 of which are free to air. Do you well, think people it's, Joe, it's only that Sunday... Sunday at midday where the championship is goes unopposed. Do you know what no I mean? One's, no one's going to watch the championship. They'll watch the playoffs because they always do. But nobody is going to be tuning in to watch Nottingham Forest v Brentford, which is a big game in that league. The only games that neutral is going to be watching are sort of Leeds, just because people want them to fail and sort of come to the end of the season. Maybe a couple of games there. But the championship is just going to be sitting there playing it, playing out to its own supporters in the same way that League One and League Two would have been. So your momentous, your momentous moment, Joe, is that a redrawing of the league lines to to the regional stuff? Because that's been mooted, Ben, since you know well, May. I've, time, I've, hasn't it? I've kind of fatalistically said the only way that money's going to get to the second tier is if the second tier belongs to the Premier League, and um, I'm afraid that might squidge, you know, a bigger gap you know, at that cliff edge then. Um you're effectively just moving the cliff edge though, aren't you? Um and Well you might you might be stopping any entrance into that. Well league. what I was gonna say, Joe, is it's gonna be a mad race for your Ipswich, Sunderland, you know, to make sure that because if I'm if I'm doing Premier League and Premier League two, my Premier League's only having sixteen teams in it and my Premier League two is probably only having twenty, you know, twenty twenty two teams in it anyway. And you've got a lot of lower end Premier League teams who'd be the, you know, way ahead of teams like Ipswich, Sunderland, Pompey, yeah. Oxford um, in that regard. But it'll be very interesting, Joe, whether you're whether you're right or not. And if you can't directly draw it back to what's happened today, you might indirectly um, be able to. Um, before we do too many forecasts on the complete restructure of the uh, English football pyramid, <laughs> which may or may not happen. Um, but, but just quickly, when is League One going to start again? Who knows? Well, yeah, so and I mean, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so if the championship's going to start in September and League One isn't going to start in September, then... Well, and it's all it all seems to have been um, ignored. Um, and like, for example, I don't want to get into politics, but we've seen the government today backpedal on their decision for the 
all the primary school kids to be going in, which anybody who was anywhere near education knew was never going to happen before um, July. It just wasn't possible. And it feels this feels a little bit similar. It feels like, OK, we've got all this sorted. Let's book our playoffs up before contracts expire on June the 30th. But there's a, you know, there's a ticking time bomb, which is, well, if you can't afford to play nine games here behind closed doors, how the hell can you play 46 when everyone's got less money than they did um, in March? And yeah, Joe, that's a real concern. And I hope you're totally wrong. And I hope that there's some, I don't know who's going to come along on a horse or whatever, but um, it's its an advantageous time for someone. And I hope the someone is, is an advers- uh, advantageous time for Rick Parry to say, come on. Give us more solidarity, give us more support. Or is it an advantageous time for the Premier League to say, look here, Leeds, look here, Forest, Sheffield Wednesday, you're big clubs, aren't you? You know, why don't you why don't you come why don't you come with us? Do, do you know what I mean? And it's Rich, it's hard to see uh, I can see which one's more attractive. And likely. Yeah. And, yeah. and likely, yeah. I mean I hope it's all right. And I um, I hope the FA are, are strong um now as well and um I mean, we, we we could debate whether it's even um, feasible to have four professional divisions in the way that in the way that we do, and that a lot of Europe doesn't. But um, look, let's not get too far into the weeds with that because this is an Ipswich Town podcast, Richard. So um, let's talk specifically about Ipswich because the points per game has kicked in, which has dropped them below Gillingham for an eleventh place finish on. 63.56 points on the on the Just projection face. sandwich between Steve Evans, Gillingham and um, Burton, who have just uh, had their manager leave to help them save a little bit of cash yeah, yeah. Um, to fund their wink, wink, 4,000 4, seat of oh, not even seats at Burton. Oh, there you go. Um, look at this through an Ipswich prism then, Rich, because hey, it could be a lot worse, at least. Ipswich are one of these teams that might not get left behind, uh, given their stature and size. But um, where, where, where does this moment stand? And I know we've got questions on this from an Ipswich point of view. I mean, we're not, we're we're likely to not get left behind financially because the heart the the heartstrings are going to be pulled upon by Evans if you're a season ticket holder in the next week or so. When it comes to refunds, there'll be academy donations, all kinds of stuff to make us not ask for our money back. Um, but on the face of it, 11th in the league table, however you arrive at that, whether you play games or not, is failure, abject failure in the context of where we were in October, start of November, even end of January, top of the league in January. And as I tweeted a couple of days ago, six weeks is all it took us to go from first to 10th and now 11th on points per game. And we talked about on the previous pod that COVID is a nice little distraction and possibly means that whatever might have t- turned out if we'd ended up 10th or 11th in, in the normal um, run of things is going to get swept aside. And I've got no confidence that Lambert knows what he's doing. And, you know, maybe League One looks totally different whenever the football starts and he gets a, you know, an easy ride of it because everyone's not playing or, or, or packed administration. Up. Playing yeah. 17-year-olds. But but you have to kind of sometimes make decisions on the basis of fact. And the fact is we're 11th. We've got the biggest, one of the biggest budgets in the league. Lambert's one of the highest paid managers in the league. And the best we can muster is 11th. I don't think anyone of an Ipswich Town persuasion should be happy about that, regardless of however the league table has, has arrived at. Joe? Yeah, I, I suppose the only thing... F- from Richards is about how you sort how the league table arrived there. Had our had our season been a case of two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, and we just lost the last couple of games coming into this, and we sat there and it's like, okay, well, you can see what we're trying to do. We're not getting there, but that isn't in any way how the season's gone. We we came, we flew out the blocks, and when we beat Fleetwood away in the, at the start of October, we had something like 27 points from 11 games. Something it like was 2.2 points per game or something at was, that point. Us and it? Liverpool were the only unbeaten teams yeah. in the country. We we were absolutely dick in the league. We were flying. We looked... I'm, I'm not saying we were going to get 100 points, 100 goals, but we were absolutely flying and it looked like... I know some of the performances weren't always the best, but when you build yourself a base like that to go from, it's to even miss the playoffs by... 
would be inexcusable. Oh, that, that needs relegation form from that but, from that position, Joe. Well, no, it, it was, it, wasn't it? It's not, it's not even that. It's we have missed the playoffs. We are about seven what, points, eight, ignoring eight points. Yeah, ignoring points per game. I think it was seven points, Joe. Fifty-two to fifty-nine. I think it was. having played a game more as well. Yeah, Twelve exactly with the points right. per game. Yeah, is it? It's just. Yeah unbelievable how how badly we've done and you look at the form and what did we get from our last nine games four points Stop it. it's just those, those, those sort of runs get managers sacked in the championship let well, alone promotion favorites in league one well and, our, our crap run culminated in Lambert getting a four-year contract extension didn't it i mean that's one of the sliding doors moments along with ballsing up since feb and all the you know we need to ben we need to talk about our performance against the top teams in the league because that's ultimately potentially what's costing us being up in the playoffs but joe's right i mean there was nothing there to get any personally any belief that we were going to do anything other than scrape one nils or crappy two nils against the shit teams in the league that we were due to play we wouldn't have got in the playoffs despite what lambert evans or leo neil think we were never ever going to get in the playoffs from the from where we were after cov I think we we had a we had a very small outside chance of doing it purely because we had such an easy run in. But I think even Lambert admitted it on the website just now in that at the last eight games we needed to win six, and that's probably right. Six or seven we needed to win. But when you look, we had to play Rochdale at home, AFC Wimbledon at home, Bolton at home, Southend at home. I know the way we were playing, we didn't look like we'd beat anyone, but you should beat all four of them. I think between Bolton, Southend, and um, AFC Wimbledon they had two away wins between all three of them this season so you've got so you sort that's four wins and then you've got to try and pick up points in the other games but it's, it's all doesn't mean anything now but we, we we had a very very slim chance but it wasn't impossible but we'd have well we, we lost against every decent side we played so there was no way we were going to get through the playoffs as it was but um yeah, true Richard does the now chaos in the football world i.e there's going to be, you know, um and ah in about when League One starts, if League One starts, when fans come back in, do we extend the transfer window, how many clubs are in administration, who's broke, what transfer market is there. All this chaos makes it very hard for a manager to be fired in this position, doesn't it? Agreed. And look, it's from the outside, if we were to sack Lambert now, I mean, how bloody harsh is that in the current climate? Not that... He needs the money, I suspect. But yeah, I think. But I, no, I honestly don't think any other. If you look at any other football fan and they said, "Oh, Ipswich finished eleventh, they like you saw the optus that their worst finish is 1952-53." Paul Lambert's been sacked. I don't think anyone would think, "Oh, that's such a harsh decision sacking Lambert true. after this." I, I genuinely think. don't think there's anyone who would think that. Maybe like your your one percent of football fans might think it, but the ninety nine percent would think he's been lucky to have still be in the job up till now. But well, Joe, had... let, let me sorry, Rich. Um, let me just flip the question, though. What is anybody new coming in going to do, uh, aside from establish a pattern of play and um, be tactically <laughs> better, um, uh, given a depressed transfer market, a uh, you know, potential sort of football recession and, and a weird restructuring? It's a hard time for somebody new to come into a club now, isn't it, Joe? Well, yes, yes and no. Yes, it is a hard time to come in. But the issue we've got is that we've got 28 senior or 28 professionals contracted till the end of next season. So we are not going to be bringing anyone in. I was going to say, we don't need to sign anyone, do we? It, it might be one in, one out. So whoever is the manager next season needs to be able to work with the set of players that we've got and try and get something out of them. Paul Lambert's had two years working with them and hasn't got anything out of them. So what, what, how, how much worse could anyone else do? I, I feel Lambert's success next year is purely because everyone else will be in the bigger shit than we are. That's all I can, you know, Peterborough, I think McCanty will find a way to get Peterborough viable. Sunderland off the field. There's a lot of stuff going on there that might make them, might give them issues. We probably hope Portsmouth go up in the playoffs because they'll be our They'll be the best person. bet, aren't they? Yeah, exactly right. We, you don't mind Wickham Fleetwood sticking around. Um, it feels like Lambert might luck out next season because everyone else is so crap. Let's talk about um, Coventry and Rotherham quickly. I mean, Coventry just haven't lost any games. They've been a really, really good side. It's a great job by um, Mark Robbins, Loans, and, you know, it's fullback that went off to Norwich. And um, they've just been really good, haven't they? And um, they probably deserve to go up. Rotherham, Jesus Christ. I like Paul Warren. 
I like Rotherham. You know, they've been heralded as the one club from the championship to actually make a profit. And where did they end up? Relegated. And OK, mm. they're a little bit direct, but I like I like the model. It seems sustainable. Um, but God, have they lucked out, um, Rich? Yeah. I, but then the the only team that I, th- I think out of... Yeah, Rotherham doubled us, didn't they? Coventry they did, didn't double yeah. us. And Rotherham beat us quite convincingly both times. So, you know, if that's the benchmark, beating us, I guess then they deserve it. But, um, yeah, in terms of how the line has been drawn, they're pretty fortunate, aren't they? Um, Coventry, just the only team that didn't really suffer a blip. Mm, Everyone else kind of that, yeah. fell away for quite a while. Coventry were just quite consistent. As you say, not losing was most significant. But quality throughout the team... You know, and good up and coming players. The, the O'Hare from Villa was a good loan. Um, you know, I th- and I, you know I'm going to get accused of all sorts of stuff, but I haven't got a problem with Coventry going up. Rotherham, as you say, a bit fortunate, but probably would have made it, I suspect, um, because they had their blip, and I think we're coming back up, weren't they? Um, Joe, where do you stand on the other end of the table? Um, obviously. Um, taking into account Mr. Mark Palios's margin for error over the last three years, then Coventry are fine. Rotherham, I mean, God, 77.94. OK, 44 game season, but Jesus, that's low, isn't it? Um, down the bottom, Bolton, death sentence with the nine point deduction, wasn't it? South End are broke and, you know, couldn't really do anything. Tranmere, um, I, I feel a bit conflicted on Tranmere. I do feel sorry for them, but the idea that somebody who's 21st after 34 games is automatically Real Madrid because they've won three games and signed some players in January um, doesn't necessarily wash with me but um, why would anyone from AFC Wimbledon all the way up to Doncaster have voted to play on when it when it saves them um, what, what, what do you think Joe about the implications at the, at the top and the bottom before we talk about the playoffs um, personally yeah agree with both of you that Coventry fully deserve their promotion. And I don't think anyone is worried about that. I think they've been the best team in the league over, over the whole campaign and deserve to go up. Rotherham, incredibly lucky that they were sort of holding the present when the music stopped. <laughs> Wickham, I think, even luckier because, like I say, I think Darren McAnthony made the point that Wickham have got a game in hand. Their game in hand is away against Coventry and they're giving is it? Oh. two point something points for that, which moves them from seventh to third, which is crazy and like I say I, I'm, I can see why Peterborough are massively frustrated I can see why Sutherland are frustrated Wickham and Rotherham are hugely lucky uh, Tranmere incre- again incredibly unlucky AFC Wimbledon MK Dons those teams down there incredibly lucky to have survived and I think what sort of Mark Palios and Nicola Palios have said at Tranmere is that they've basically planned their season which has worked for them for the last two years for their back-to-back promotions where they withhold a percentage of their budget until they get to January where they use it and then try and finish the season stronger. It seems Peterborough did that as well with the money they chucked in on the likes of Smodix, um, George, is it George Taylor, the midfielder? I can't remember, George something, um, that they signed. So you've got two clubs that have signed well in January, have sort of held money back to make an impact in January, have seen that impact being made, see themselves moving up the table and then... It gets curtailed, so they're both, like I say, incredibly unfortunate. And I say it just leaves a it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when they they think the season should be played, the championship is being played, and other teams, for their own interest, are kicking the can down the road and making no effort to play the season out. They've got, I mean, some clout behind them as well. So, I mean, do we think that this decision is it? I I can't I can't believe for one second there won't be any kind of consequences or recriminations on this decision from the likes of the Palioses who are, as I said, they've I mean, Mark Palios is ex FA, isn't he? Um mm. McAntony has obviously, you know, got some money behind him and a bit of clout as well. Do you think they'll let this lie? Um, well I, I don't see much choice. I don't think yeah, I guess I, I don't it. think they're gonna want to, but um yeah. Um wise man once said to me, um there's people who sue and there's people who threaten to sue. And mm. people who sue don't threaten to sue, they just sue. Um, so we'll see and like we pointed out at the top of the programme um, the EFL are going to lean on their long period of consultation and all of that nonsense aren't they um, so uh, and uh, the, to go to the Andy Holt um, kind of stand on it do you want Tranmere to plough money into 
lawyers' pockets or get promoted back out of League Two if there's a if yeah. there's a League Two. And, and do you remember the Sheffield United Tevez thing? It just it just kind of rumbled and rumbled. And okay, you get paid off, but you know you, you're in League One um, a couple of years later anyway. And you know what? What does it? What does it? What does it really matter? Um, Rich, talk to me about these playoffs. So, um, and honestly, we haven't got a confirmed date, but by God, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Friday. I think it'd be Friday week, and then the following Tuesday with the final on the 30th of June when the contracts expire. I'm, I, I don't quote me on that, but well, if they're already in training, as we as well, and if the league, mentioned. if the league two are the, the day before, then you know we we could literally see um, Wick and Fleetwood and Oxford. Oxford Pompey. Um, I'll, I'll give you my two pen of Rich. Um, really impressed with Fleetwood when they were when they were down here. I remember I did the show. I think did you do the show, Joe, afterwards? Um, yes. We spoke course, about yeah. Fleetwood's tactical flexibility and you know Glenn Whelan and who was the bald forward Paddy? Paddy Madden. Paddy Madden playing well and the skyscraper centre half and you know I thought I thought they were pretty good. Oxford the same. Um, I've got. Fleetwood in the final over Wickham, and I've got Oxford in the final over Pompey. What, what, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I, I mean, Wickham. I, again, my 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 reference is having watched Wickham against us, um, and New Year's Day. I didn't think Wickham were any good at all. You know, it was the fact that we we conceded a stupid goal as we were doing about that time. We should have won that one, and Wickham's form had had really tailed off. So the fact they've ended up third is um, is a bit doesn't really do justice to their form at the time. You know they've done good, and this is their highest league finish I think in their history. Is it perhaps? Yes, so it is. you have to give credit to Gareth Ainsworth because last season I think they were on the verge of relegation, weren't they? One of the twelve teams that potentially we could have gone down in in April. Um, but I think they're the, one of the weaker teams amongst the playoffs. Joey Barton I think gives Fleetwood a bit of an edge. Um, Portsmouth kind of unsung, kind of quietly came up on. On the rails, they started really slowly and then slow burned into the season. And and I think you know I wouldn't write off Pompey. They've got some. I think Pompey, Pompey lose to, the lose the correct, most from an empty stadium in a in a playoff game, don't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. Fratton could Park be, is a bit of a. Yeah. Really... Wickham and Fleet would play in empty stadiums most of the time. <laughs> that's, <just laughs> that's tremendous. Oh. Um, Oxford, I don't I don't know how to, what to say about Oxford. Obviously, the game that we all saw in the piss and now in rain is you couldn't read read much into that. The other game um, they were comfortable though. Weren't just they? really spiky their form under um, Robinson Oxford, and again they were in the shit last season as well. So they suddenly had a bit of a resurgence. I, th- I think it'll I think it'll be Portsmouth personally. I th- but I say I think when when you get to the playoffs in any division, all four teams have things going for them as much as more than they do going against them they're all good sides to get in there so like I said while Wickham look the weakest of the teams in there from recent form they also have won playoffs before they've got an experienced manager who knows how to get them through a playoff campaign so so I I wouldn't write any any of them off they're they're not a nice team to play against they're a pretty dirty nasty cynical team to play against so that might do enough to get them through well, the, the other I'm thing is, pretty got disappointed the that neither of you have been able to prove, give me more clarity on these predictions after three mm-hmm. months with no games and complete uncertainty, and no one knows what the squads or the forms going to be like. And we're playing in empty stadiums, and the games are probably going to be in about a week's time. So, um, yeah, there's something just quickly, but is there something in the resources and the facilities that the clubs have got to be able to get the conditioning back up? I just assume Portsmouth haven't been in the Premier League recently. They've probably got a decent setup behind the scenes. Fleet have you been, have you been to Fratton Park? <laughs> I haven't, but I assume they don't train there, do they? Well, when I, I don't know where they are now, but when I was at uni, basically, so what, 2005, our uni of Southampton sports grounds was shared with Portsmouth. So oh, there you go. Well, what do we I used to turn up in our mini metros and Teddy Sharing would turn up in his I'm Ferrari. not driving a mini metro. <laughs> <laughs> but, you can keep but saying just it. talk you can over you. <laughs> They just didn't. They didn't have any training facilities then. They still right. don't have a category one or two academy, so I wouldn't. It, I wouldn't expect them to have particularly right. nice facilities. Richard, I'm going to butcher this joke. Uh, we're two thirds of the way through the pod. Uh, we're not going to finish it. We're just going to allow it to be done on um, unweighted points per game. So uh, we'll see you next season. But um, um, we've got some questions, guys. Um, I'd love to rattle through lots of these. Um, and continually. My um, requests for these to be answered succinctly fall on deaf ears as people ramble on for 10 minutes. So let's try and let's try and get these done. I know I'm as guilty as anyone. Um, right. Do you want to go first, Rich? Go on, then. 
Uh, Jack says, surely the only way to solve the season was to null and void or play the games out so everyone has the same games played? Question mark. Nah. I don't, only from a selfish perspective that if you null and void the season, all the pointless long journeys that I made to tick off grounds in the 92 would have been utterly pointless. So. I don't see that they would have been. I've got a mate who's adamant the other way around. But um, what about the, what about the uh, memories, though, Rich? Exactly, all those yeah, great yeah, days in Blackpool, and you know, you seen um, Cats, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that film's terrible. I'm obviously talking right. about the, the um, stage but, show. Here. But I, I think the other theory, the other thing to chuck, it, I, I'm just ignoring what you said about keeping it quick. Yeah, um, the other thing that the league one could have done was just wait a little bit longer to figure out whether they could have finished the season off a little. I, I don't care. I don't care anymore. They're going to be Decided. done. They're going to be done by the time all the contract expiries happen. Could so have they'll they'll That's be sure. they'll be happy with that. Joe, Tim Gornall says, um, is this a stay of execution for Lambert? Would he have been sacked if we finished 11th after 44 games? Um, well, reading what's just come out from Leo Neal, I heard him on Radio Suffolk earlier today, and Lambert's put a statement on the website. There's more to come from him this week. It does seem as though Lambert is going to be staying in position. It does feel that that was going to be Evans' plan as it was. That's what he wanted to do anyway, regardless of how the season went. But I think a couple more... Like the Fleetwood game, the crowd really started to turn. The Coventry game was a bit softer, but had we not beaten Southend at home, Bolton at home, I think the noise may have encouraged Evans to make a decision on that. But yeah, it, it does feel like Lambert has come out of the COVID crisis quite handy. Um, this is Aaron Beale, Richard. I believe I played the piano as he walked down the aisle at his wedding, if I've got the right person there. Oh, what did exactly. you play? What, was it the, oh, the wedding march? or was it? Now you're embarrassing me. I can't remember. How is Elaine? She left you yet? <laughs> <laughs> you get the grass stains out of your trousers? Um, hi, Aaron. Um, Lambert is the first manager I've wanted to be sacked in 30 years supporting the club. What possible excuse is there for keeping him? Um, it's too expensive. I, I, there's a bit of a debate raging on whether it's whether the the five year contract is kind of made up of incentives and add ons and stuff and or whether he is honestly the most highly paid manager in League One. We honestly don't know. We're speculating. I think there's there's an argument to sack him if you want to save half a million quid a year or whatever it is and get someone cheaper. Um but we I, I don't know. You know What that, was the question again? I think <laughs> You know that Marcus Evans is more interested in the stability and loyalty. Yeah, than... which is well, yeah, building yes, side of the of the argument, don't you? But there's so. nothing stable about being shit. Yeah. Well, there's yeah, nothing stable about there's something consistent. Of, something consistent about it, though, Joe, isn't there? We consistently well, drop down twelve places a season. <laughs> From twelfth in the championship to twenty fourth to now eleventh in league. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's the cost of I, I, the, the legal kind of how you break that contract in a COVID crisis. I don't know whether that works or not. I suspect if the league had played out and we finished 11th, I think there would have been a FC mutual consent situation there. I want to ask oh, David course. Diamond about all the Corona clauses he's put in the insurance Force contract that he's, that, he's, that, he's, that he's written. Also, um, when we were talking about the league being finished and the clubs voting against it, uh, Craig had mentioned that sort of a very good point that he spoke earlier about is that how frustrating even more so is it for the likes of especially Peterborough, Sunderland, who wanted to continue the season to go into the playoffs, that four teams voted for the season to finish and are now going to go and play in the playoffs themselves. So that All voted, I would say to Craig, who I love dearly, is their season. what would Craig do in their position? Yeah, rest in interest, come on. Do the, good, do the right thing. <laughs> the <laughs> do the right thing for his club and vote the to stop playing. Good. Jesus Get your, um, it's like picking up the old community chest, go straight to the playoffs card. Now I'm going to roll and go past Mayfair with all the hotels on it and stuff like that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going straight to go, I'm afraid. But then I am known as a notorious shithouse amongst our podcast team, aren't I? There we go. Um, this is Will, who I'll answer this one. I would love to hear Harry's thoughts on this season. Any chance of a special guest appearance? Um, we can pick up the bat phone to Harry, whether or not. Harry feels like he's in a position to um, put himself in front of the camera or to speak would be up to him. But we may well be able to get a message from him, even if he doesn't appear. Um, and we all love and miss Harry, who is um, off de-stressing after um, a very busy 2018-19, put it that way. And um, he will be listening. Don't you worry. 
I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning it. I, I messaged him a, f- a few months ago and just to check in and stuff. Um, he'd been watching on kind of, you know, it's stressful enough having jobs and all that kind of stuff that lives outside the podcast world. So he def- you know, definitely needed to de-stress, but he'd been keeping an eye. And I think he was as just depressed and frustrated with the situation as everyone. So I'm sure there's nothing that he would have said something more articulate and poetic perhaps, but I think he's largely in tune with a lot of the opinions that we've shared on here, hopefully. I'm, I'm glad to hear that he hasn't got away with not being depressed while we've all had to put up with this for the last time. <laughs> he just hasn't had to watch the 90 minutes on the, on the Saturday afternoon as much. Um, do the esteemed panel. That's a bad start, isn't it? There's no esteem in here. Certainly no self-esteem from my point of view. It's there we hot go. air, maybe. <laughs> do the esteemed panel believe there's a way to have an executive at the EFL to make these decisions rather than three separate votes with different outcomes. Can I take that guys? Um, Joe said it at the start in an ideal world. Yes, that would be exactly what we want. Unanimity. Um, but sadly, um, and I'm going to agree with you again, Joe, which I don't like doing, but since 1992, these cliff edges have got bigger and bigger and bigger between all the divisions. And sadly, I believe it's been impossible for the EFL to have unanimity across these three divisions but yes that's obviously uh, that was fpl tractor that's obviously what we what we would have wanted but sadly the football pyramid is not really pyramid shaped is it, it I, i'm struggling to think what is it shape it is i don't know what it it's is. like a needle really isn't it and the premier league's just at the top of the needle i think but eye, yeah. there Shitting we go. On everyone else <laughs> <laughs> um this is mark um joe no town fan should disagree with this decision uh PL crashed the tractor into a ditch. Metaphor. Uh, to not even make the playoffs is a huge fail, the biggest possible. How does the club recover while he's still here? Other than Downs and Wolfie, do you think we'll lose any more players? Good, good question, that, Joe. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you write this with Lambert here, which we assume he will be? We basically just have to hope that he's had an epiphany in the COVID crisis and has actually remembered how to motivate and set up a team over over it because he's going to he's going to have another chance to come back and i just like i say I've, I've got very very little faith in in him from what i've seen up till now i just hope that maybe when he first came in he wanted he wanted to play out from the back play four three three, set the squad up to do that and i i hope maybe that he actually realizes that all the chopping and changing all the rotation was just an absolute disaster and it just did not work I, I listened to um one of the kings of anglia pods a little while ago and, and either andy or Stu said on there that apparently we'd been like studying man city with regards to how they rotate their players and it's and it's like that and it's like well man city have like joe their Fernand, players are really you know, good the team. <laughs> they've, they've got 18 players Hugely. Which international should I bring off the bench this week? <laughs> yeah, but of a very similar, and it's like we've. I think we've tried to be far, far too clever this year, and I think maybe Lambert, like I say, all, all we can hope for as fans is that he can go back to basics, try and pick his best eleven, and have a sort of squad of, like I say, I think we've got twenty eight players, but try and get trim that down a little bit to get some players that sort of have a similar stand and try and keep people hungry, not not just give players minutes for the sake of it to try and keep it. Don't try and keep everyone happy. Keep the fans happy and keep winning on the pitch, maybe. I think I would so have... It's not a tough would... league, though, is it, guys? Come on. No. I mean, you really don't need to be that good to, to get out of... Well... But generally, you, know what, you should know what your best team is. And I'm, I'm yeah. not saying you play your best team every week. You may make a change here or there, but you should be able to sit down and say, look, our best team is Thomas Holy in goal, Vincent Young at right back, or whoever needs to come in there, Garber at left back, Chambers and Wolferton in the middle. Scoose, Downs and whoever in the middle. Like I say, you, you should be able to say what your team is, the team you want to play. And when you can't play that, you try and work around it. Like I say, with regards to players out, Downs, I, st- I think he should go personally for him because I think he's too good for League One at the moment when he plays. I think he's a player that could jump right up into a Premier League squad if they, if the money's on offer. And I think he's hopefully we get a decent fee from still. I think Luke Wolfenden could do with another year here because... While he had a good season, I do think over this bad run at the end of it, he's probably really he looks he looks like he's really been struggling and not playing that not playing that well for the last sort of two months of the season potentially. And I think he needs another season at this level. I think if anyone wanted him, they'd be in the championship. And I think the championship's transfer market is going to have completely collapsed. So I just don't see that there is a market for him 
out there at the moment unless you have a Sheffield United want to come in and pick him up and loan him out or try and bring him into their rotation to play him. But I just, I, th- I think hopefully Wolfie will be here for another year and I think it'll, I think that'd be the best thing for him. But I think Downs is going to have to go. Wolfie. Down, Downs has the kind of Matt Clark kind of situation about him when Portsmouth sell him to Brighton and he gets loaned to Derby, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, I'd imagine that might happen with Flynn Downs. The Prem team might take a punt and loan him to a championship club. If you can pick him up for five million quid, if you can pick him up for five million quid, it's an absolute no-brainer as a Premiership team. He's young, he's English, he's quality. He's, he's got the next a, Mark Noble, isn't he? You should go to West Ham. There you go. He's got, He's a West Ham fan, and he's from Brentwood, so that is the move that makes the most sense. But like I say, if, if I was if I was any Premier League club, I'd be picking him up for five million quid and either loaning him out or bringing him into the squad because I just I think it's one of those transfers you can't lose on. Yep. The only way is Essex, the Sugar Hut. Brentwood. I've, I've been there actually. I had lunch there. Um, Richard, this is Chris, London Tractor Boy. I wonder if the clubs who voted to end the season because they, inverted commas, can't afford to play behind closed doors would be able to miraculously be able to afford it in August when they aren't close to relegation. I can't believe anything changes in that respect. And I think the fact that we didn't decide today when League One 2021 is going to start is a real concern. I think we'll have another month or two of people having the same kind of back and forth that we did to end this season. I honestly do. I don't, I don't, Accrington are not going to magic out half a million quid from somewhere to be able to run the season. Um, and either the EFL needs to play hardball and set the date and we stick with it or it will be everyone deciding for themselves and we won't decide again, will we? Because we'd, we'd, we'd we... start in... In July, in July or August, wouldn't we? But or, or we get a bailout from somewhere. The books, don't they? Yeah. Accrington only have about four players whose contract runs past the end of this season. So if they have to bring some kids in and pay them £100 a week and lose every week, then... But it's testing, isn't that's it, what got too, isn't it? And all that stuff. It's the test. It's COVID testing. Yeah, or, yeah we'll just... Well, he's been really only, consistent, only hasn't recruit, he, that he? Only recruit people who have already had COVID. They have the antibodies. But I, I, I was speaking to someone the other day about this, actually, and it's talking about COVID testing. Surely it's now in Ipswich Town's best interest for the whole squad to have COVID between now and pre-season. Unless any of them got asthma. Yeah, but they should. But I mean, you, you, if they could all have it and have the antibody. I know, I know you're not going to. It's not like a chicken pox party with children, but <laughs> at what, if, if the next season starts, you don't want a player coming down with COVID, do you? So surely there's a... There's an, there must be in is it like I say it's in the club's interest for people to develop it and and not that's die. the whole other side of this debate, Joe, isn't it? That we've spoken about this on the assumption that players will be kept safe and there won't be massive outbreaks of this virus going into the mm-hmm. going into the autumn. It, like everything we've said has been on the assumption that 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 doesn't happen and um, a second wave. Yeah, yeah it's really when when, does, when when is the final day of the championship season? Um, the playoff final is on August the 1st or 2nd. The final round of games, game week 46, is July the 21st and the 22nd, the midweek so, there. So so that is when the teams that are going to be relegated into League One are going to be finalised. So Yes. Or, well, so, I mean, it could be, it could be you know, we're, we're playing so fast, it could be the week before then. But, yeah, around but, that but time. But effectively, that's when the teams who are going to be in this league need to have a rest from that point on before yeah, pre-season point. can start. So yeah. you're going to need at least a couple of weeks after that. And then you're going to need a three, four, five week pre-season. So you're looking at, you're looking at September, aren't you? Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be the middle of September. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, there we go, guys. I'm going to stop on the, I'll stop on the questions there. Cause we could go on and on and on and on. Um, Hopefully we have covered that. Um, like I say, we had no script and we had um, just some questions and our immediate thoughts. Obviously, as always, we would implore you to um, tweet us at Blue Monday ITFC if you agree, disagree with anything we've said. Um, maybe we'll do a State of the Union pod. And I will just quickly plug, um, and please don't get vexed with us here. Every season we do our season review. Um, we do not decide how well or badly the team plays, listeners. Um, so we can only review the games and the results. Please don't get cross with us if we're reviewing a season you didn't enjoy. We like to think as um, a balanced podcast group that we report when we play badly and we report when we play well. So um, 
if that's not for you, then don't listen. Um, come back and uh, we'll see you maybe next season. But we will maybe have a look at a state of the union. Maybe we'll get Dave out for that. Um, we will um, we'll go through and we'll review the season um, because that's what we've always done here. And we, 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 we kind of like to bookend the season with that now, but we might leave that a couple of weeks. In the meantime, I would love to plug the four-part retrospective on the 99-2000 season um, that had most of the pod team on, the watch-along of the playoff final, the four-part retrospective on the 1980-81 season with Dave and Statman, which has just recently dropped. There you go. Listen to that if you want some some good vibes. Although, um, spoiler alert, we don't win the league. We lose it on the last day of the season. Um, there you go. Nice. Um, Props now. Wonderful uh, Matt Holland interview. Four part, incredible Jim McGilton interview. One of the best things we've ever done. Statman and Jim McGilton over five or six hours. Probably the one guy with the most incredible loney Premier League playoff everything manager fired um all of it go and go and check all of that out so we've tried our best to keep going with the content um and um we will be continuing to do so with that being said rich would you like to plug the new supporter feature i'm going to sidestep this one the new supporter feature on acast for me i i would love to thank you yeah um... (laughs) ask for the people's money I, before I before I do that, there's also um, a 10 minute 99 2000 wonderful montage thing that I put together. It's clipping some of those interviews that you'd done with um, John O and with Marcus Stewart and um, Mikey's with Matt Holland and some of the stats with Jimmy Jilton. And hopefully people found that quite kind of a nice thing to relive over the last, given it's the 20th anniversary. That was that was something that we put some effort into. And talking about putting an effort. Um, Clearly, this is a bit of impromptu, but there's lots of hours and there's lots of effort and technology and um, prep and scripting and editing and formatting <laughs> that goes on to make this happen. Not yeah, not tonight. Um, and so um, our, our hosting partners, Acast, who who are the platform where we put the audio podcast out, have have kind of got a new feature where um, if you're motivated to and if you're um, keen to support us um, and to maybe do more or do better of, of what we already do um, then there's a there's a link to um, do a donation um, and that just helps support us sustain and hopefully improve what we're already doing it's it's discretionary there's no um, threat of us going and making it a subscriber or a patreon thing um, but if you kind of enjoy this and enjoy listening to joe and Ben and all the guys, Dave and Stat and Mikey and Seb and Craig and I've forgotten someone, I'm sure. Um, then um, feel free to donate. It would be really great if you did, if you could, um, but no obligation to. Have I um, have I done that with You've sufficient... You've done that really well and people can like, find that reluctance. pinned on our Twitter page. And you if can. you do donate, we'll obviously put the money either into yeah. away <laughs> match tickets or software for filming or hardware in terms of microphones or stuff like that dave's not going to take it to the golf course joe's not going to do another extension with it or buy some rattan furniture joe's going to buy paddy kenny's (laughs) (laughs) actually to be fair i i would release some of the money for joe's shirt collection because it's just funny at this point now (laughs) um joe is there any update on your shirt collection I'm now just missing. The only one I haven't got is the 89 to 92 blue Fison's kit. That's I, no, I'm not interested in that stuff. I'm interested in that. obscure, overweight players. and. I have got the shirt. Mark Fish shirt here. Actually. Oh, well, let's see it. Let's see it. Shirts that they may have played in. Follow us on Twitter, by the way, at Very Blue Monday ITFC. And... Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Keep that held up, Joe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's the only time you can see a used Mark Fish shirt from... Is that from QPR, Joe? QPR. 45 minutes. The 45 minutes. Can I just say, I thought Mark Fish was brilliant when he played for Bolton. I thought he was a great player, yeah. but yeah, obviously didn't work here. Um, Joe, any final thoughts here today? I suppose the only thought, final thought is after listening to Lee O'Neill on the radio there, after reading what Paul Lambert said on the website with regards and the bit there saying there'll be more to follow later in the week, and after reading Marcus Evans' statements, are we all agreed that Lambert is going to be here at the start of next season, bar... A sort of crazy change change of heart. So there was there was one question. So you did a you did a um, 
a spin-off chain didn't you ben on on twitter so oh, did there was one okay. question that yeah people started to ask, ask questions on that um finishing 11th um this is stephen fuchs um i think i've put it Uwe fuchs who used to play for millwall klaus no um finishing 11th surely paul lambert should walk away that's not gonna happen is it no he's not a walk what, Don't from a half, so, no. half a million quid a year job? I've never when... walked away from a fight before. Yeah. No, no, Lambert's not going. Lambert's not going anywhere. But that shouldn't stop anyone listening to the listening to the pod in the in the future if they're not. But the, the only thing I'd say, like Evans hasn't sort of explicitly said anything about Lambert in his statements from what I've read so far. So. I don't know, maybe it's just more hope than expectation, but it seems like when he got given the new contract at Wickham on New Year's Day, that was basically, uh, we'd been talking for a few weeks about, is it time for Lambert to go? And then it was like, well, there's no point talking about it anymore because this new contract does that. Does does what we've read and listened to today, does that do the same? No point talking about it anymore. It's it's, um, it's going to get talked about, Joe, and I think it's a I think it's a reasonable question to ask given the, um, you know, the kind of disparity between the financial state size of the club and the league finish. I think it's reasonable to ask, but we know our chairman, our owner, um, and we know how the club's been run. And um, I just personally think it's very, not that it's not worth talking about. Of course it's worth talking about. And we want to reflect the views of our, our listeners and not, you know, not um, if they, if they want us to talk about it, we'll talk about it, Joe. But um um, I, I think I, I see where you're going and I, I don't think it's I don't think it's likely. No, I think unless he's um, a assuming League One starts normally and, you know, the football pyramid doesn't get smashed with a sledgehammer, then as long as he's within playoff distance by October, November, then that's the only, you know, he'd, he'd have to be in a similar position that George Burley was in when he lost at Grimsby in um, 2002, you know, down down where where was he bottom half of the table looks like it wasn't working we we we're, we're going to we're going to make a move um but yeah it's has marcus taken a, a leaf out of mix book and the more we talk about lambert getting sacked the more likely he is to get a contract extension <laughs> isn't our best actor just to not talk about it at all if that's the case there you go there you go there's a theory for you there's a theory to finish. I'm right. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. So it's Blue Monday, uh, at Blue Monday ITFC on the Twitter. Um, what's the YouTube handle, Rich? Is it just Blue Monday ITFC? Yeah, I think so. I think just yeah. type Blue Monday into YouTube. You can't and you'll miss see, it. You'll see all of our content there. Hit that subscribe button. Um, ring hit, that bell. Ring that bell. You can ring my bell. It's a bit pitchy, wasn't it? Insta as well. Insta, Insta Blue Monday Pod team, Blue Monday pod um, team. Yeah. and we will be back um, possibly with um, another ex player if they stop being flaky <laughs> um, very very soon and um, we will be reviewing the season but we'll give you warning if you want to if you want to dip out of that one but um, we, we'd implore you to listen right say goodbye Richard goodbye everyone say goodbye Joe Fares Lambert out I thought you were quite mild until then. <laughs> and you waited right until the end to drop that bloody Just shit grenade in, didn't you? Bye, everyone. <laughs>